welcome to my channel. Well, I want to use this awl here. And uh, it's supposed to be, I, I put an edge on it a little bit. I made it come to a point. It's supposed to be like two chisels. Right, this side's flat, and then this side should be, you know, flat, and it should come to a, a point. And you can see, I haven't gotten it all the way up here, just the tip. And the reason is, for leather, you, uh, now you gotta remember this is a slip joint. So if you're pushing, you wanna hold down here, or if you're holding, you wanna hold, like, right here. But when it's sharp, it cuts in and goes through pretty quickly. You try that with the uh, with one that's a little bit more dull, and uh, if you're not watching what you're doing, you're back here and you're trying to put a lot of force. A blade will fold. Now this one has a half stop, and it's a pretty solid half stop. And this end down here is not sharp. So, with this being sharp like this, how did, how did I get it that way? Well, I took out of the Lansky system, the coarse diamond, and I sat here. This takes a while, even with a diamond stoke, because this is 440C, and it has a pretty decent... Rockwell on it From what I can tell just from sharpening it, but you know you get it on that angle and you just And oh man, it takes time. It's like basically trying to take a butter knife and Put an edge on it except that it's got good steel on it because this was dull I mean you can look from the original one and if you're working with leather, or really if you're working with anything, with an awl, you want it like... Ideally, you would have three cutting edges. You would have right here, the ridge, the spine would be sharp, and then right here. And then this would be, you know, flat, just so that it could fold into the handle and everything. And with it like that... It's not going to cut you with this part being dull. Now, if you did like I did on that other one, yeah, you're going to wind up with, with the uh, amputating all. But anyways, yeah, I just wanted to tell you that uh, that takes a while to do this. And uh, I went with the coarse one. And then I took my uh, fine stone here and kept going with the fine one. And then I would look at it and everything. Now, you may be tempted to go with a, a bench grinder or something like that. But you're going to take off a lot of metal pretty quickly. And if you get that angle wrong, you can mess this up. The bench grinder is going at a high speed. That's why you can do this on a whetstone too, you know. This is almost like a Scandi grind. This pebble, you just sit there and back and forth, back and forth until you get a sharp edge. And occasionally you hit this side, but not that much. That's like the final part of it because you don't want to, you don't want to have this ground down so much when this is what you want to grind down anyway. Yeah, it, you can polish it up afterwards and stuff. I don't care about that. I wanted a more functional and it's still, you know, see, no blood. It's still not super dangerous or anything. So there you go. I thought I'd give you that update. Oh, and this little, uh, this little freebie light that they sent has a, I didn't notice that before, but it has a little thing where you can put it on a tripod. It's got the threads for that. And then you can use it as a, now, as far as like on videos, it does have some PWM pulse width modulation. And uh, the camera will pick it up.
so let me turn my light off we'll turn this one off <laughs> but it it's good at lighting up an area let's show peppy peppy and crew and you know with the little tripod and everything let me adjust everything up here see the mess see the total mess And then you can strobe the entire dinosaur crew. Y'all behave. Straighten up in there. This is the police. So yeah, that's... Just thought I'd show you that. Because I hadn't noticed that before. And then I was like, oh, what are these threads for? Well, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder, wonder. But yeah, uh, Joel's package is, was mailed out today, so I'll be doing uh, another another one very soon. I won't be able to mail it out until next payday because really I I spent quarters. Oh, and I got another one of these mats here at Dollar Tree. I, I was sitting up there and I was looking. Because before I thought it was where they keep the pens and the crayons and the notebooks. You would think, right? That this is where you would find this. And it's got gunk on it because it's been sitting here. Um, and I looked and I looked and I, I couldn't find this over there. And I thought, maybe they sold out because I remember they had a lot of them. Further down, further down the aisle. And like the little arts and crafts area where they got wooden dowels and paint and stuff like that. That's where these were sitting. And it was sitting in like a card index like that. So I picked up a couple of those. So that will be in the next giveaway also. You'll get one of these little mats. So even if you don't have your own little you know, rubber mat to disassemble stuff or to cut stuff, it also has a nice angle thing here, you know. If you're keeping it parallel like this, this is 45 degrees. This is 30, so, you know, you're 25 and everything is going to be further down here. You could almost use it as an angle gauge for your, your knife and stuff like that. Because half of this would be 15 degrees, so you just draw another line right down there. You can do the same with any other measurement you want. Just And then, of course, you know, it's got inch scales here, up and down and all around. And it's nice and flexible. I think this would also be good for camping. You know, like if you're out there and and you you need something to prepare your food on and stuff like that. And you don't want to set it on rocks and everything else. This would be a good little, you know, it's closed cell. feels like kind of rubbery. You know, it doesn't take a, a real set. A rubber mat. But there you go. I thought I'd give you that little update on uh, awls and everything. Because I haven't worked with leather that much. And at one time I thought, well, you know, an awl would be safer if it's, if it's dull. Because then you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to cut yourself. Yeah, well, a dull knife is dangerous, especially in a slip joint. And you're trying to push. It's, it's like trying to do a stab because you're meeting resistance. And if it's not going through, like, see, this one, I can feel it biting in. It, yeah, I put a sharp point on it. And the sides are sharp, at least right down here. It, I, like I said, I've got more work to do on it because you can see. I put a headlamp on, and I sat there, and, I had, and I'd sharpen it, and I'd look for that glare, you know, and I'd look. Is it, is it pointy yet? You can see. There's dull over here, but... You got to think how deep you're going to go with leather. I mean, how big of a hole are you going to go? After a while, you can just, if you're going to go that big, you know, if you're going to go that big with a hole, you can widen it out with a, a pen blade or something else. Or, you know, if this guy was sharp. I haven't sharpened this main blade. But you could use start using that one to, you know, open it up. Anyways, there, there you go. Um... If I make mistakes, I'll let you know, and hey, I made a mistake on thinking that dull awls, you know, would be a, a, a safe thing, yeah. 
it can also be dangerous especially kind of like a dull knife you know if you're putting if you're putting enough pressure you're trying to poke through something and it's dull and you're gripping this thing wrong like if you go up and like this you might be all right but if you're gripping it like here because you want to get a lot of leverage all you got is that half stop protecting if there is one and uh, if you haven't realized it by then oh there goes fingers and it's gonna dig into the bone you've got tendons and nerves and vessels in there believe me i getting it's usually a small knife that'll that'll do it to you too because i don't know uh disrespect you know not respecting the knife or You learn. I mean, I learned on that. I learned on that other, that sharp ball. I went, and eh, just closed like this. Wow, you know. I mean, it's, it didn't leave a big scar. Or anything. It's still healing, and it's gone. That one's gone. But uh, yeah, there you go. I had just tried out different awls, and some of these are good, but uh, most of them need touching up uh, to be efficient for working with leather. Now, with drywall or working with wood maybe but still man when it this is fairly you know it's not super thick leather it's tool leather it was designed for stuff but still it was stopping that you know just pushing on and then you got the danger if it goes through not as much as with plastic but you might get yourself on the other end but not with a dull one anyways yeah there we go sorry ran my mouth too long thank you for watching and have a nice day sharp and the other one is sharp now this guy right here is not sharp because it's you said this triangular punch thing which you don't necessarily need if you're going to go into drywall and stuff like that button for leather let's let's just see what it does i mean it'll get in there eventually <laughs> it's not even getting in there because this tip is dull I'm just making a dent. So yeah, if you're going to use this in leather, man, you're going you're gonna to want to sharpen that up. All right, let's take Old Faithful here. Now, I have sharpened this point up in here, but let's try another spot. Oh, yeah. It's starting to go. You can see the tip coming through. It could also use a little sharpening. I mean, but it's going to get the job done. See? It'll get through. All right, let's try the, the Western. I haven't sharpened this or done anything to it. But yeah, it looks like it's pointy enough. And it's a thinner blade, so it's, I mean, a thinner point. Where are over here oh yeah you gotta watch out for that <clears throat> how to make a mistake I'm not gonna edit that out yeah the more force you use the more chance you've got as a slip joint doing that to you it landed back here yeah this one needs to be sharpened up all right let's try this guy it depends on what you're going to use it for. Like I said, if you're going to use it on, you know, like drywall or wood or something like that. This one again, I don't think I've touched this guy. All right. Don't put your hand back there. Put it up here on the kick when you're doing this. We can all learn from William's mistakes. <laughs> Three finger William. What happened to you? Uh, I was messing around with leather and a slip joint, and I tried to show how to do it with a pen blade. <laughs> and I took off the tip of my finger. You idiot. Yeah. Yeah, this is too. It'll get through, but it, it's taken a while. So, the sharper you got your point on leather, see, we've learned something today. How not to... How not to... Um, use an awl. 
see that's why if this is dough that's why i was saying sometimes a dull one is safe you'd probably just want to if you want to keep it safe you'd probably just want maybe this far of the tip depending on how far you're gonna you know you're gonna gouge your leather but once you got that hole started this triangular effect this edge will always be kind of like dull on a triangle but it needs to be sharpened so we already know that and we already know how not to do things with a slip joint because <clears throat> again if you're pushing with pressure as, as you saw and you've got your hand back because you want to get a good grip on the handle. That was my mistake. Which one was I using? I don't remember which one I was using when it tried to get me. I think it was this guy. But if you've got your hand back here and you're pushing, uh, that's going to happen. And then that's going to happen. <clears throat> so, how much do you like your... See, see there were the other all coming. Now I packaged up the one uh, going to Joel, so I, I can't demonstrate it, but it was sharp. I know it was going to get through this leather real easily, but I could have also be as if it was dull. See, that's where a dull knife, you know, gives you a little bit of problem in that uh, you have to use more force to get through whatever you were going through. So there you go. See, I make mistakes too.